Saint Paul de Vence in the south of France is one of the best preserved and prettiest medieval villages in all of Europe. This is really a very special town. It's an old village with a fortified wall around it with some stone structures that date back to the 15th and 16th centuries. And it had fallen apart in recent times, early 20th century, it was quite dilapidated. Some of the old buildings were falling down. But it has been fixed up like new. It's amazing because the art industry has moved in. There are 50 galleries, workshops, and studios here of the highest quality. There is one main lane in the village and we're going to walk you along its entire length from one end to the other and then back again. This goes right through the middle of the village. You can see on the map how we came in through the main front gate and now we're walking along the main lane, the Rue Grande. There's a few little side streets as well. It's all pedestrianized in here and the main action, the galleries are along the main lane. There are a few staircases in this hill town, but nothing very steep. It's quite easy to navigate. And all around the village are beautiful houses dotting the green hills. Easily reached from the main city of Nice in a one-hour public bus ride. If you look carefully out the bus window, you'll get a quick glimpse of Saint Paul up on top of its hill. The bus drops you off across the street. The bus is numbered 400 and it takes you directly from the city of Nice without any change of bus and no need to try and take a train because the train does not come to Saint Paul. You walk through a little place into the village. But before you even begin your walk inside the walls, you'll be tempted by outdoor restaurants and also there's a soca stand usually. That wonderful crepe made from chickpea, a specialty of Provence. The visitor enters the town through the vaulted passage of the main gate and then makes his way by the inner guard and under a tower with a channel for the porculus, that gate that could drop down to keep out the enemy, finally reaching the inside of the town. Saint Paul de Vence is quiet and clean, spotless, scrubbed, no hint of graffiti. It's full of picturesque lanes of quaint corners and odd passages. The main street and all the side alleys are but continuations of the original mule paths of the old days, interrupted here and there with steps and way too narrow to admit a car of any kind. Even the paving on the lanes is precise and beautiful. There's obviously a lot of money that's flowing through this little town of Saint Paul with these high-end art galleries everywhere. And these monies have been put to good use in fixing up this little village. There's no trash, nothing's broken here. Everything is sparkling. They keep the place spick and span. So if you want to see an old medieval village with all of the modern comforts, go visit Saint Paul in Provence. As you venture through these village streets, it becomes clear that Saint Paul remains synonymous with art. Modern, contemporary, and fringe featuring talented artists from all schools in the many galleries. It's like an open-air museum where you'll see artists at work in their studios. The cobblestone paving is so carefully arranged, it looks as if it's a mosaic picture. So precious, it's like a necklace encircling the town with colored stones. Far more creative than typical European cobbled alleys. Sturdy and easy to walk on. The Place de la Grande Fontaine stands in the very center of town. Redesigned in the 17th and again in the 19th century, there were several other public wells available in the village, but the Grande Fontaine was certainly the main one. The beautiful fountain was designed in a typical Provencal style and has inspired many painters and photographers. This square has always been the busiest spot in the village. From dawn till dusk, people would come to fetch water, donkeys and mules would drink, and washerwomen would scrub and beat their laundry in the wash house. That water basin is still here, 
It's open to the public, but you have to walk into that arcaded loggia behind the fountain to get a good look at it. You're always welcome to enter the art galleries, and many of them cleverly display dozens of works that you can see right from the lane, luring you inside. While galleries provide a nice colorful decoration, the town itself is the main work of art. The structure of the buildings, the people, the alignment of the lanes, it's such a wonderful place. In a very small village like this with a population inside the wall of just about 300 people, everybody knows each other and stops to say a friendly hello as they walk the dog. Certainly, you could spend just an hour or two visiting St. Paul and walk around, enjoy its charms, and leave. But you might find that you'd like to stay overnight here to really immerse yourself in this special beauty and use it as a base for exploring some of the surrounding countryside. You could easily spend a few days here and never get tired of walking through these little lanes. Notice there's a small five-star hotel right in the middle of town, La Saint Paul. That would be an excellent place to stay if you'd like to spend the night. They're open all year except for November and December. While it's a luxury hotel, and so you will pay the price, rooms generally go for under 300 euro. There is another hotel within the walls and seven more nearby outside the walls. You never have to worry about getting lost while you're walking around in this village because it's so small and very clearly defined with a wall around it, so you know when you've reached the edge of town as we will soon be doing. That means you don't need a map to navigate your way around and also you can relax. You don't have to be in any great rush. Even if you only have a couple of hours, that's plenty of time to see the village. And if you have a full day, you could get that much more out of your visit. Dogs are part of life here, which shows just how relaxed and friendly this place is. When you reach the far end of the main lane, you exit through a gateway arch called Port Denise because it's on the south edge of the village, which leads in the direction of the city of Nice. And then there's a staircase that takes you right up onto the wall with a lovely viewing platform where you can see across the distant landscape. There's a nice walkway at this part of the wall that provides access to a grand panorama view looking across and then down at the cemetery of the town and the small gardens of the houses sloping down to them with the dark foliage and enjoying the vista of orange trees, olive trees, and the houses off in the distance. Cars park beyond the wall because none are allowed inside the village. It's such a wonderful feeling standing up on this wall enjoying the panorama view that you don't want to miss it. And it's only 400 meters away from where you entered the town after enjoying that delightful walk along the main lane. And notice the outline around town showing the extent of the walls. These walls were built in the early 16th century by King Francis I. King Francois Premier of France. After the destructive invasion of Provence by Charles V of Spain, Francis found that his frontier in this area was insufficiently protected and proceeded with construction of the walls and bastions which still exist almost in their entirety today. You could return back into the village along that same lane, the Rue Grande, or better yet, you might as well try something different and explore some of the side lanes with more places to eat and things to see. Passing under a characteristic old stone arch, notice the wine cellar doorway on the right. It's a 14th century wine cellar, open for wine tasting and purchase. There is just something so very special about narrow pedestrian medieval stone lanes. You're surrounded left and right, front and rear by such interesting visuals with side alleys making twisted turns, offering a surprise around every corner. Tiny plazas, ancient doors and windows, potted plants and homes above. On the summit of the town is the church and close to it the two great square towers of the 13th and 14th centuries. The taller of the towers is the belfry of the church, while the other is the tower of the town. 
which is the City Hall. It's the oldest building in town, dating to the 12th century. It's the only part of the original chateau to have survived. St. Paul appears so unlike our modern workaday world of hotels, houses, railway stations, and shops that one can hardly believe that this place is real and that we are not seeing it in some happy dream. Stepping into the Collegial Church is like entering another wonderland. Dates back to the 14th century, with construction continuing about 400 years, resulting in a blend of different periods and styles of architecture. The church interior is one of the most beautiful in Provence and certainly one of the most interesting. Outside the church, we saw several of the village cats hanging around. In this kind of peaceful village with no cars and very little noise, cats can take over ownership of their neighborhood without any fear. With all of the visitors milling about, they're quite used to people and don't seem to mind if you take their picture. This staircase going down in front of the church will lead you right back to the main lane, the Rue Grande, but along the way, there's a great little restaurant called The Artiste, serving crepes and a wide menu, or just stop in for tea and pastry. My little group dropped anchor and had a lovely lunch. You could start the day here as early as 8.30 with some pastries, coffee, and fruit juice. Or for lunch, they offer a wide range of tasty salads and crepes and a Mediterranean cuisine. Wait, did somebody say crepes? What kind of food do you have? Very good, very good. Oh, uh, crepe, it's, it's um, fantastic. Mm. No. Good. Uh -huh. Chef uh, is... A it's the best crepe I ever had, according to several people on TripAdvisor. Not only was the food very tasty and this atmosphere wonderful in the outdoor ambiance of a barrel vaulted passageway, but the service was also quick and real friendly. Easy to find the artiste along this stairway between the Rue Grande and the main church. Ça va bien? Oui. Et vous? Ça va? Oui. Ça va? Oui. Très bien. Oui. Bonjour. Once you've seen the major sites, it's, it's rewarding to get away into those little side lanes where you'll find a quiet cafe and the local people actually live. In such picturesque setting, it looks like something out of a historical movie or an entertaining maze. The permanent population residing within the walls is about 300 people. And yet each year it gets two and a half million visitors. We've been showing you the town on a quiet, peaceful day because we're visiting in the month of October, which is a perfect time, maybe November, even March, April. The off season is when you want to come. During the summer, it can get very crowded. Even now, in the afternoon, it's getting busier compared to how quiet it was when we arrived earlier in the day. We have another movie about San Paul that you can find in our collection. It was filmed a few years earlier. This is the 4K version, which is all new and different than that other movie, but take a look and you can find more about San Paul in the other film. There are lots of excellent restaurants in this small town because they have to cater to large numbers of visitors and they take care of you very well here. Our time in Sao Paul is drawing to an end, but we are not quite done yet. Exiting through the Port de Vence, the gateway, the medieval incredible tunnel of stone exiting the village. Then we arrive at the famous Bull play area with the men throwing their balls around on the dirt field in the traditional French game of Bull. That wraps up our coverage, but there is always more to learn about a place like Sao Paul. And one excellent way to learn more is the official tourist information website of Sao Paul. They've got brochures you can download with information about the hotels, restaurants, the history, the sites, the walking tours, and the art galleries. Everything you need to know in your visit. They placed heritage signs in the village describing the sites with links to their apps that give you even more information. I'm going to share with you now a video I photographed in 2004 with a tourist spokesperson 
and she's still there today working as the promotions manager. So my name is Elodie. I work in the tourist office in Saint Paul. Saint Paul is very famous because before it's a medieval village. You can find several houses was uh, from the 12th century. It was a very little village with a lot of artists like Picasso, Chagall. That friendly tourist information office has many suggestions for guided tours and activities and walks on your own. So this is a map of the village in French okay. and English. And inside you have the map. And this is the list of the main choice, touristic sites to see in Saint Paul. Mm -hmm. Okay. I give you this one. Uh, you can find the list of the accommodation and the restaurants uh -huh. also. Cho the shopping. Those brochures and maps that LED has been showing us back then are still available today and all have been updated. You can find them on the Tourist Information Office website. You can read them online or you can download them as a PDF brochure. And they also have information about tours that you can take while you're here in the village. The brochures offer practical information and a quick preview of your visit. You'll notice there are quite a few hotels available in the surrounding areas, including some bed and breakfasts. That completes this visit to Sao Paulo de Vance. And I remind you, we have other movies about this beautiful village available in our collection. Be sure to take a look. We frequently upload new movies, so please subscribe to our channel and click that little alarm bell so you'll be notified. And if you enjoyed the movie, how about a thumbs up and we always welcome comments down below. Or if you have questions about the destination, make note and we'll answer them. Thanks for watching.